Sure, my name is Chad Zick, and I am a primary care physician. Uh, I work in Northern Virginia. So I take care of the primary medical needs, largely for uh, the uninsured and Medicaid, which is a financial assistance from the government, uh, for largely an immigrant population in Northern Virginia, although we do have some patients who are citizens, uh, although I would say probably the majority, maybe 80% are immigrants. I believe about 80% are Latin American. Actually, let me back up and say, maybe 90% of our patient population is immigrants because 80% of them speak Spanish. <laughs> so that only leaves 20%. And I'd say the rest of the populations come from Ethiopia, a few from Eritrea, a few from, a lot from Ghana, actually. Uh, we have some from Korea, South Korea, a few from China. Interestingly, many of our Chinese patients are actually Uyghurs. And then we have, I'm trying to think who else. And then we have some from, a, some, a few from the Middle East as well. Pa Pakistan actually, we have a number from Pakistan. Uh, most of the time I'm working in a clinic. So, you know, children who watch this might be used to visiting, used to visiting their pediatrician. So it's the same kind of sit, uh, setup that you would see at your pediatrician's office. Although our walls are not necessarily as colorful or interesting as yours. Well, it's a lot of schooling. Um, so I, I did about four years of undergraduate studies and then afterwards I did medical school and then after medical school I did residency. And so that's about, it's about eight years of doing university education and then another three years of on-the-job training after that for my particular specialty. Residency is basically on-the-job training. So you spend uh, many hours working in the hospital with people who are several years ahead of you in their experience and expertise uh, so that you can learn from them and that you're supervised to make sure that you are given the freedom to think for yourself but you are prevented from making mistakes so that nobody gets hurt. To be honest I think it was actually probably a bigger challenge in the end to become bilingual than it was uh, just the schooling because I, I was naturally kind of gifted with academics and it was easy for me to do science classes, math classes. I think I, when I started to learn Spanish, that really pushed me to kind of develop another part of my brain. So I'd say actually learning how to practice medicine largely for the Spanish speaking population was probably one of the bigger challenges, more than just the academics. Well, I've always wanted to be able to provide services for people that don't have access to healthcare. And uh, that's certainly true with the immigrant population. Uh, what, regardless of whether or not they're documented, it's just hard for people who don't speak English to know where to go to get access for their basic medical needs. And so I feel very fulfilled being able to do that for the population in Northern Virginia. Um, it was always something I had thought about, although I wasn't entirely sure. I will say that when I was 18 years old, I went to, excuse me, when I was 18 years old, I went to Haiti, and that was a life-changing experience for me. I think I had gotten very accustomed to the standard of living in the United States, and I had no idea what it might be like in another part of the world. And the person who brought me to Haiti was actually a physician himself who actually had given up his career in medicine eventually to go build schools, uh, which is what he still does today at almost 90 years of age. And so his example inspired me and uh, made me interested in medicine, whereas before I think I just wanted to be an airline pilot and make money. <laughs> uh, it took some time and convincing. I thought about it when I was 18, but I think I didn't really make the decision to go towards medical school until I was about 26 or so. Well, I think if you're in particular talk about the healthcare field, I'll say there are many different jobs available in the healthcare field. You don't have to be a doctor. Uh, I rely on the help of nurses and social workers and uh, medical assistants. And so everyone has a really important role to play in my clinic. It's not just me and my decisions. It's everybody is working together 
as a team. So I would just want to encourage you to say that whatever job you pick, uh, you can be very happy and fulfilled. But I think it's very important to feel like you can be part of a team that's accomplishing something uh, greater than what you can accomplish by yourself. Because I think you feel a lot more satisfaction when you're part of a, a team effort that's, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts.